by the Holy Ghost to, to minister on this subject. And I believe that we are going to fix some things um, in the spirit realm in women's lives and in marriages. Um, I want to start out by saying the church and the world needs women. Um, everybody wants favor on their life, right? And I'll give you the definition of favor. It's that which gives or creates joy and pleasure, delight, charm, loveliness. Those are just some of the descriptive of, of favor. And we all want that. But not everybody has it. How many feel like there have been seasons in your life where there was no favor? That everything was hard. That every day you got up and there was, there was just no joy. There was no uh, motivation that you struggled. And so um, there are different keys that activate favor on our life. But one of the most important keys I want to talk about that activates favor is this. It's honor. If you go back and you read the definition of honor, it means giving value to one because of the rank, the position, or the state of office in which they hold. I wrote down as I, I, I went through the entire Bible looking up the word honor, and I just wanted to briefly touch on some scriptures because God is about honor. This particular verse is repeated over and over throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. You can find it beginning in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. It says, honor your father and mother that your days may be long upon the earth. Leviticus 19 and 32, and we don't do this hardly anymore, but you shall rise before the gray-headed and you will honor the presence of an old man and fear your God. Other cultures have great respect for the elderly, especially those in China and Japan and the old cultures. You want to know why some of those cultures have lasted so long? Because they practice honor in their culture. America has lost the understanding of honor in the house, not just in the house of the Lord. Every facet of society no longer seems to have any honor, starting with the police. When God made men, Psalms 8 and 5, David is talking about this. He said, you have crowned men. God made him in his own image. And then the Bible said he crowned him with glory and honor. Why would he do that? Because this is going to go back to what I want to talk about. Because ultimately, man would be called God's wife. The church, hallelujah, is the bride of Christ. And God understood for the church to, under, to walk in its potential and its full ability that she needed to be honored by her husband. Romans 12 and 10 says, be kindly, affectionate, to one another with brotherly love. 
in honor, giving preference to one another. I think this church does a stellar job in honoring one another. One of the first things that people will say when they come to Regeneration Nashville is how much love they feel in this building. Jesus said it this way, how can you say you love the Father whom you've not seen if you cannot love your brother whom you have seen? 1 Timothy 5 and 3, and we practice this. We support this in our church. The Bible says to honor widows. It's an indictment on families that are doing well when they have a widow in their family that is struggling to pay its bills while sons and grandsons are making money and paying bills and going on vacations. If you want the blessing of God on your family tree, the Bible said you need to honor widows. Some of you need to be sending money to your mother that her husband died. She should not have to live from hand to mouth while you are blessed. It is a prerequisite from God. Honor your widows in the house of the Lord. First Timothy 5 and 17, it says this. Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially to those who labor in word and doctrine. Sometimes, and, I, and I've been guilty of this, you look at ministry who is blessed and has abundance, and the first thing that people want to say is, well, they're just gouging the body of Christ, or they're doing this or doing that. I don't know how much money Kenneth Copeland is worth, but if you can go on the Internet, you can, you can Google it, and people think, well, you know, he's just been all about prosperity. It's not that. He has favor on his life. He's made most of his money, if I'm not mistaken, outside of the church. God told him to buy some land years ago, and it turned out it had gas on it. Just because a minister is blessed doesn't mean that they are misappropriating funds. It also, it means sometimes uh, that they have walked in integrity and heaven opened up over them. Can I tell you this? If your pastor's blessed, then it doesn't stop with him. It keeps on going down, and you get blessed. Hallelujah. And so God understands favor. So today, we're going to focus on honoring not just our mothers, but our wives. We have heard it said that it's a man's world. How many have ever heard that? This paradigm that has permeated our society really into just the last few short decades. I want to read to you some statistics on contributions that have been made by women to society. I have their names and the year they did it. I'm not going to repeat that for the sake of time. But here are the things, just a partial list. And, and let me say this before I read this. We will really never know how many women inventors there were because in the early years of the United States, a woman could not get a patent in her own name. A patent was considered a kind of property, and until the late 1800s, laws forbade women in most states from owning property 
or entering into legal agreements in their own names. Instead, a woman's property would be in the name of her husband or her father. So here are some things that women have contributed to society or have created. Alphabet blocks, Abercrombie tests, which evaluates a baby's health on birth, chocolate chip cookies. Can I get an amen? The circular saw, the dishwasher, the disposable diaper, the electric hot water heater, the elevated railway, the engine muffler, the fire escape, globes, the ironing board, Kevlar, which is steel light fiber used in all kinds of things, the life raft, liquid paper, the locomotive chimney, the medical, medical syringe, a paper bag making machine, the rolling pin, the rotary engine, Scotch guard fabric protector, Snuggy Babel character, a baby character, uh, street, street cleaning machine, submarine lamps and telescopes, and the windshield wiper. We owe women something. None of us would be coming to church on a rainy day if it had not been for women. So the next time you turn on your windshield wipers and it starts doing this, it says women make a contribution, hallelujah, to society. <laughs> women are the primary caretakers of children and the elders in every country of the world. Globally, women comprise almost 50% of the entire workforce. And by 2020, they estimated, which we're past that now, women will control 70% of all personal wealth. One great educator said this, you educate a man, you educate a man. You educate a woman, you educate an entire generation. If we go back to the book of Genesis chapter 2, and it says, And the Lord God said, this is verse 18, It is not good that man should exist alone. I will make him a help me for him. And I'm not trying to be ugly here today, but I can tell you this. There's a saying that says behind a great, a, a, every great man, there's a great woman. I heard it say this way one time, behind every successful man, there is a more surprised woman. <laughs> but if you find a successful man, most of the time, you're going to find that there was a lady in his life that contributed greatly. This is why I have such a problem with sorry men who their wife slaves with them for 30 years to build a business, and then when they get wealthy, they divorce her for a 30-year-old and leave her high and dry. There is a special place in eternity for men like that. And so God said this. He said, I made man in my own image and in my likeness, but he also made woman in his own image and in his own likeness. And to some degree, from where I can read the scriptures, before sin came in, there was an equality with men and women that there isn't now. Because God honored women. And he called her. He said, you are a help me, which means to secure. And it's the same root word for Holy Ghost in the New Testament. And so the woman is likened to the Holy Spirit that even though, hallelujah, that Christ was enabled by the power of God to do great things, he did not change the world until the Holy Spirit came upon him. And we need women in this hour in the house of the Lord to release the innate ability that God put in them to advance the kingdom of the Lord. Yeah. 
So in the devil understood what women were going to mean to God's creation. Verse 3 of Genesis, or chapter 3 of Genesis and verse 15, God said to the serpent, I will put hatred between thee, not and the man, but between thee and the woman, between thy seed and not his seed, but her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So who is the woman's seed? It calls the last part him. It was Jesus Christ. So the Lord was declaring this, that it was the woman, hallelujah, that would lose the most glorious gift in the earth to mankind, that it was the woman that God was going to use to be the channel to lose something that would revolutionize the very culture of how people lived. And that's why the devil went after the woman, because he knew that if I can stop the seed, then it will never be able to break my head. And so from the very beginning, God put such great purpose on the woman. Now, if you go to Luke chapter 1 and verse 28, you got to remember here that, you know, I, I hear especially men Talk about that. Well, you know, if the woman hadn't have done what she did, society wouldn't be messed up and all of that. It would have. Adam would have messed it up somewhere. And I'm still trying to figure out where was Adam when the enemy was coming after who he's supposed to be covering. You as men need to be covering your wives. If you do not have a daily prayer life, you have just opened the door for hell to walk into your life and submarine you and torpedo you because you are not covering your wife. And the enemy saw that and so people say you know the woman is the one who is responsible and Paul said this he said it was not Adam who was first to see but it was the woman so I'm not going to debate that but I will also, I will say this when God got ready to fix it he didn't use a man He looked at an angel and he said, I want you to go down. And the angel came to Mary and said, not that you're just favored. He said, you are highly favored. The word highly favored means to honor with blessing. He said, the Lord is with thee among women and you are blessed. Every mother and wife in this house, I want you to hear me. In the eyes of God, you are blessed. And it is the desire of the Lord for you to be highly favored. And never let the enemy through a man denigrate you and destroy your confidence that I have been made in the image of God. I can tell you this, we as a church will never reach the apex of what God wants regeneration Nashville to do until the gifts that are in our ladies are released by the power of the Lord. It was women, if, if I read my Bible right, the men forsook Christ. It was the women that stood at the cross. It was the women that showed up at the tomb. 
and it was a woman that God revealed himself to on resurrection because the Bible said the men wouldn't believe that Jesus was alive. And when she told them they were alive, they still wouldn't believe it. And it took women, hallelujah, to show up. There is an ability for women to be able to believe in the things of God that sometimes hard-headed men cannot get their mind around. So no wonder, hallelujah, it's taken women over the last hundred years to somehow sustain the church until revival could begin to hit our men in this hour. And we finally got men in the house of God that lay down their pride and their ego and know how to yield to the power of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> now, I'm, I'm coming to a point here. So I want to I get to the power of the husband with his wife. Colossians 3 and 19 is very, very plain. This is a commandment to all men who are married. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter towards them. This is what bitter means angry, indignant, irritated. And one of them means that you leave in her stomach a sour taste. I have been around men that everybody in the house walked on eggshells because the man was angry all the time. We as husbands do not have the God-given right to just say anything we want to our wives and to our mothers. We don't have the right to get angry all the time. And this saying, I am the head of my house, you may be. But there is a God-given responsibility that goes with being the head of the house. It doesn't mean that your wife sits at home for two weeks while you're out on some jaunt with your buddies and spending three thousand dollars and she wants one new dress at Kmart for 50 bucks and we can't break loose for that can I tell you it's not your money it's y'all's money and so the Lord begins to talk about this he said husbands he said you need to love your wives. Then he goes into Ephesians 5 and 25. He says, husbands, love your wives. They say, well, what does that mean? This is what it means. Love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. It's taken me a lot of years, but now I understand that if there's only one thing in the house, and I know my wife likes it and I like it, I'm going to give her preeminence. I'm not going to eat it or drink it because I love her and I want to give her preeminence. If you will put your wife first and honor her, then you begin to release gifts that are in her that have been dormant. Your wife is not just the chauffeur for your children, your housekeeper and your maid, your cook, and your sex slave. We're getting down to where the rubber meets the road here. But too many men treat their wives like a possession. It's my house. It's my car. We're going to do what I want. We're going to go where we want. We're going to have it my way. You make me happy and everything will be good. That's not the way God does that. Husbands love your wife even as Christ also loved the church. There has to be an honor and a respect that is released in the natural realm between a man and a woman if you want your marriage to survive. First Peter 3 and 7 says, Husbands, give honor unto your wife as unto the weaker vessel. Does it mean that she is emotionally, or oh, let, me, let me take that back. 
it doesn't mean that intellectually she's not as smart as you are. Because I found that most women are smarter than their husbands. It says, as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace which translates in the, in the Greek favor of life. And then, boy, this is powerful. So that your prayers be not hindered. Nowhere does it have a verse that tells wives that if you don't honor your husband, your prayers will be hindered. There is a reciprocation to that. But the Lord is very plain here. He said, number one, he said, husbands, favor of life is not just for you. You and your wife are heirs together of the favor of life. And he said this. You know, there's a lot of men that talk about, I just can't figure out why I can't get a breakthrough. And nothing works for me. And I can't seem to have a good job. And I prayed about it. And God won't talk to me. It's because you won't honor your wife. And the way you dishonor her is how you treat, how you treat her is that your prayers aren't getting any higher than the roof. Because if you want God to hear your prayers, the Bible said you better honor your wife. Hallelujah. And you better show respect to her. And when you do, you're going to find out that you're going to be a lot more happy than you've ever been in your life. The old saying, happy wife, happy life. So this is really where I'm coming to. The dimension that you honor is the dimension that ministers to you. Give you an example, Matthew 10 and 41, and we're all familiar with this. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall what? Receive a prophet's reward. So if you honor <clears throat> a prophet, then it opens up this dimension in the spirit where God, hallelujah, has to come down and release a gift on your life from a prophet. But what activates the gift? It's honor. See, if I, I think I wrote this down because it is, it's such a powerful principle. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. The head of every man is Christ. So you're not running rope. Every man in this building has a headship. In other words, you are being covered and protected by Christ. So the head of every man <clears throat> is Jesus. And then it says this, and the head of every woman is the man. So, and then the head, the Bible says, of Christ is God. So you understand that there, God has instituted a hierarchy of a covering and authority, even with Christ. And this is why the Bible said that Jesus, hallelujah, laid down his life for the bride because he did not want her to die. So he died for her. You should be willing to lay down your life for your wife. <clears throat> it 
So if Christ is the head of the church, or he's the head of man, and man is the head of woman, then man, in order to bless his wife, he has to honor her. Say, well, you know, I just don't like some things she does. Well, probably she doesn't like some things you do. That's called marriage. That's why you need the Holy Ghost in your house. The presence of God is a great equalizer. <clears throat> so we're going to do something here in a little bit in this building that I believe that I'm, I've been mandated by God to do. But I want to tell you a little story. <clears throat> this happened several years ago. It was in another country. And there was a very successful pastor in his ministry in the prophetic. He had a great gift in him. And uh, when he ministered to people and he, he pastored his church, uh, his people were really blessed. And many of them were blessed financially. And uh, over the years, people would get up and talk about how that uh, being under this man's ministry that God had changed their life and blessed them and they had an open heaven over their life. And one, one day <clears throat> in the service, the pastor and his wife were sitting there and um, they were listening to somebody testify about how God had used this pastor to bless them. And right in the middle of this, um, pastor's getting ready to get up and speak the wife just got up and walked out of church. Didn't say anything. She just went home. So the pastor ministered, and he hurried home, and she was in the kitchen cooking, and he said, is everything all right? And she didn't really say anything. And he said, did I do something wrong? Have I offended you? And she didn't reply. And he sat down at the dinner table, <clears throat> and she went over to the china cabinet. You know, most women have uh, those plates and cups that they only bring out on special occasions. And that day, instead of <clears throat> just eating on their normal dishware, she went over and she opened up the cupboard and she got out her best plates. She got out her best cups and china and silver, <clears throat> and she began to set the table. And her husband's sitting there, and he said, <clears throat> what are you doing? Is there somebody coming over? Do we have guests coming? And she looked at him, and she said, I'm tired. I'm struggling. I'm tired of us not having enough money. All the people that you minister to have money. She said, today, even though you're at my husband, she said, I don't need my husband's compassion. I need the prophet and the pastor that's in our church. And so I'm going to honor you with the best that I got. And he said the moment that she said that, that it shifted in the atmosphere and he felt the same anointing come on him that he felt when he would minister in the pulpit. And he began to operate in a gift that honoring activated in that house. And it broke something by the power of honor. If you, especially as men, if we want 
the fullness of God, then we have to operate in another level of honor. Gifts and purpose in a woman can never be fully experienced and activated until a woman is honored by her covering. And we don't understand the impact and the weight of honor anymore in this nation and to some degree in the church. Everybody is just scrapping, trying to get to the top. But can I tell you, God has set up a principle of honor. And there are seasons in our own home where she's not coming to me as her husband. She's coming to me because she needs a word of the Lord from a prophet. And when my wife comes like that, invariably I can lay hands on her because there is an honor that says, I honor the gift of God that's in you. Today we're going to release, hallelujah, and activate in this house some dormant gifts that have been suppressed by the enemy and God's going to do something to the women of this sanctuary and God's going to release something by the power of God. Come here. I felt like the Lord said that I needed to do this by example because this is what we're going to do today as a church. Today, I honor you as the mother of our children. I honor you for all the years that you struggled in our ministry when there was no payoff. And I ask your forgiveness if I have dishonored you in any way. And today, there are gifts, I believe, that God has not yet released, but as you're covering. Today, I'm going to honor you, and I am asking God to release the gifts and the anointing of God that has been placed in you as a young child. So this day, I honor you in the name of the Lord, and I recognize that it is not good for me to be by myself, but that today I need you to fulfill the vision in this house. And I release that in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> now, I want every man and his wife to come across the front of this church. If you're here with your husband, come on. And also, maybe we could clear out just the front here, but if you are a widow or if your husband is not here with you, I need a section right here that if your husband's not with you or, or you are a widow, if you would come and stand in the front here, <clears throat> my wife and I are going to stand in proxy for your husband and we're going to honor you by the laying on of hands that the dishonor <clears throat> that the enemy has tried to put on you through your husband, that God is going to break that today in the name of the Lord. And that today we're going to release something in the spirit. Now, when we do this, if you will do it out of your heart, you might have come to church today and you were fighting. Well, you're going to have to let that go. Because, men, you are the covering of your wife. And if you want the fullness of God in your life and in your home, 
then you're going to have today, through honor, <clears throat> you're going to release something that maybe has never come out of your wife before. And God is going to take this church to another level. And there are going to be gifts that are activated in the name of the Lord. And when we do this today, we're going to break this assignment that's come against marriages. That there will be no divorce in this church. Hallelujah. 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 And I... I this is a mandate that I feel from the Lord today. So I want each and every one of you to turn and look at your spouse. Husbands, I want you to look at your wife. You can say whatever you want to say. If Channing, you can go ahead and play. But you're going to, you might feel stupid doing this. I didn't feel really good about it, what I just did up here neither. <clears throat> if you are at home and you're watching, all of our online members, whether you're a member or not, I want you to do this right now because we need to release honor in this house because honor releases favor. And favor is not fair. It's merited. You earn it. And so in the name of the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, I want you to go ahead and release your spirit. Men, I want you to bless your wives. If you need to ask them for forgiveness, you need to do it. But you need to make this right. And not only that, you're releasing something in them. Hallelujah. You are telling them, I'm for you. If I haven't treated you right, I'm going to change. We're going to make this right in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. All of these women right here, babe, you have to come around the side. I'm going to just jump down here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I stand in proxy. <laughs> Lord, for these mothers and these wives, in the name of the Lord. God, I bless them in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we release honor. Hallelujah, Lord. God, we release honor. Honor, Lord, on these precious women. That, God, the favor of the Lord would be upon them. Now, God, the gifts, the anointing, the abilities, the talents that perhaps, Lord, have never been felt, never been realized. That today, hallelujah, Lord, that today, God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. God, I release an open heaven, honor, 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 in the name of the Lord, for God, you are higher than any anything else. No, Lord, if we have to bypass them, bypass them, but loose the honor this day, saith the Lord upon these men and women. God, Lord, that we are sealing something in the Spirit. Lord, that we are sealing something in the Spirit. Hallelujah, Lord. God, that we stand in proxy that the blessing of the Lord, the power of God, the anointing of the Lord Jesus. Oh, I thank you, God. God, Lord, from this day on, that there's a shift in the house. Lord, that there's an anointing, God, that the enemy cannot stop. But, Lord, we're honoring them. God, we're honoring them in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, I thank you, God, for your power. Now, Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. For, Lord, your spirit, God, your anointing. Now, God, what we're doing in the natural, begin to loose something. Open heaven, God, over this congregation. Open heaven, God, over the wives and the mothers in this sanctuary. In the name of the Lord, that from this moment on, oh, God, that there is a shift in the atmosphere. That, God, that there are powers and anointings and authorities and glory that have never yet been released in our ladies. God, today we're declaring, God, that honor is bringing favor upon the women of this house and that, God, you are going to fulfill your purpose. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
How many feel like you understand what I'm trying to do here today by the Holy Ghost? Listen, hell hates marriage unless you're gay and then they like it. Hell hates marriage. And there is an attack in the heavenlies to destroy the union. This is why if one can put a thousand, Steve quoted it, two can make 10,000 to fly. The power of a nation is the power of marriages. Hallelujah. Honor your wife. I feel like I'm teaching a marriage seminar. Share the money. Share the money. It ain't just your money. You don't get to control it. My wife and I don't make major purposes, purchases without consulting each other. You don't get to drive up to the house in a new $60,000 truck while she's driving an old Pinto and you never even asked her about it. The blessing of the Lord should be on both of you. And what I'm telling you is if you will practice honor in your marriage, you are going to loose an open heaven over your house, over your business, over your children, over your life. Why? Because anointing starts on the head. So I don't know we're blessed because Christ is blessed. And he's the head of man as it flows from Christ into the man. It's down into Aaron's beard and into the skirts. It just flows everywhere. Hallelujah. How many believe you're going to leave today changed? Praise God. You got something? Oh, yeah, come on. <clears throat> Pastor Kent, Pastor Kent, this is Crystal and Jack Anderson. Both of them are suffering from nodules on that thyroid, and both have been uh, diagnosed with the biopsy, and they have been in the hospital on Thursday, and they've asked for prayer. This is Crystal and Jack. Crystal and Jack. <clears throat> you ready to leave heal? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's do this together. In the name of the Lord, this assignment of affliction and sickness, I curse you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, from this moment on, I loose the healing power of God into their bodies. That Lord, every thing, every malady, every sickness, every disease has to leave right now. And God, we speak a normal level to everything. No tumors, no nodules, no sickness, no sickness, no sickness. In Jesus' name, we call it done. And so be it by the power of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Pastor Kent, this is Claudia. She's from Oregon. She has severe pain in her skeleton system. Her digestive system is also compromised and desires prayer for the symptoms. Amen. Where do you live in Oregon? Benville? McMinnville. I used to, I used to live in Oregon college in Portland. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Now, God, I loose the supernatural power of God into your body, into your digestive system. God, to the enzyme levels, to every part of your body. In the name of the Lord. God, she's too young to be in this kind of mess. So, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Healed. Oh, take up your bed and walk, says the Lord. Oh, God, from this day on, there is a reversal of the curse of the enemy on your body. And we declare the name of the Lord that you are healed, that 
what has already been done in the spirit has to release in the natural and God today, hallelujah, is healed in Jesus' name. 